the long-awaited sequel to James Cameron's Avatar will finally hit theaters after 13 long years, many are already looking forward to Avatar The Way of the Water, with its predecessor receiving a lot more hype because of its re-release in theaters. For today's video, we'll be talking about James Cameron as he blasts 3D movie fads after Avatar's success, plus we'll also explain all Avatar 2 footage and reveals, so keep watching for more. James Cameron, the filmmaker of Avatar, has harsh words to say about the 3D mania that followed the release of his 2009 film, and he warns against a post-Avatar 2 repeat. James Cameron critiques the rush to make 3D movies that occurred after the release of his first Avatar movie in 2009. Numerous honors and praises were given to Avatar's visual effects, and the movie was regarded as a 3D breakthrough. With a new 4K digital print, the recent re-release of Avatar demonstrated the impact of its breathtaking scenery as 3D pictures protruded from the screen and engrossed audiences in Pandora's universe. Avatar The Way of the Water, the eagerly anticipated sequel to Avatar, was also shot in 3D. At the conclusion of the Avatar remake, which included a brief sequence from The Way of the Water in the post-credits, viewers were given a sneak preview of this 3D. Although the 3D in Avatar itself was well regarded, the movie inspired an astonishing number of imitations. Avatar was a huge hit at the box office from the beginning of its run, and many critics praised its groundbreaking aesthetics. After that hit, Hollywood movies made a point of releasing almost every big blockbuster in 3D. For a while, 3D tickets were rather common and cost a few dollars more than their 2D equivalents. Future movie posters and trailers promoted 3D because it was thought to be a key selling element for movies. Cameron and Zoe Saldana, who played Neytiri in the film Avatar, recently gave a blistering interview to the New York Times about this post-Avatar trend. Cameron responded, quote, The studios blew it when questioned about the 3D fad in Hollywood and went on to detail the contrasts between the 3D process he went through and that of the bulk of Hollywood movies. The majority of these post-Avatar 3D productions chose 3D post-conversion instead of recording with natively authored 3D, which effectively implies that they add the 3D effects in the post-production process. In contrast, Cameron shot with cameras that rendered the picture in 3D during production. Few people put the same effort into creating gorgeous 3D as Cameron did, actress Zoe Saldana says, adding that the post-conversion 3D process, quote, yielded a poor result. Cameron stated in the interview that he believes the studios missed the mark. They chose 3D post-conversion, which removes it from the hands of the filmmaker on the set and puts it into a post-production process that produced a subpar outcome just to save 20% of the authoring cost of the 3D. The director also believes that the upcoming Avatar movie will revive interest in natively authored 3D, which he personally believes is the best way to go about it. Don't try to add 3D afterward to collect the upcharge on the ticket, he advises. Either do 3D or don't do 3D. To this, Zoe Saldana asked if the director wants to make a lot of money or if he just wants to create something he's, quote, truly proud of that stands the test of time. Cameron then wondered if he had to choose, but the actress revealed that, regrettably, some favored the post-conversion since it was a moneymaker. Additionally, not every director has the same amount of dedication as Cameron. The actress further expressed that she wishes more directors would recognize the distinction between a movie that is merely a smash hit and one that is truly exceptional. If only the other directors took a brief course at the Directors Guild of America, she said to which James Cameron joked that he would be the one to offer the course in response. Of course, CGI movies have been around for quite a while now, but many can't help but ask, will Avatar 2 bring in a new cycle of 3D filmmaking? Cameron's statement demonstrates his regard for 3D as an art form, as Saldana and Cameron's assessment of this Hollywood tendency suggests. Although the filmmaker has hinted in the past that he is optimistic about Avatar 2's box office performance despite the years, it is obvious that Cameron's strategy is not just predicated on financial gains. According to what Cameron says, his 3D method may end up costing him 20% more than a 3D method applied after the fact. This cycle might continue since Cameron is creating a 3D Pandora of epic proportions for the way of the water and because other producers and directors may be influenced by Cameron's work. The success of Avatar The Way of the Water will probably determine whether or if there will be a 3D renaissance to ever come near to the box office successes of 2009's Avatar or even other 2022 films like Top Gun Maverick, the sequel has large shoes to fill. If the success of the re-releases is any indicator, 
Avatar The Way of the Water will likely be financially successful. It will be fascinating to observe, in light of Cameron's analysis of 3D, whether those who may once again become interested in the trend for 3D will pay attention to what Cameron has to say and employ natively authored 3D, or fall victim to the money-hungry fate of adding 3D in post-production. Moving on to other related news, let's talk about Avatar's re-releases and credits, and the several Avatar 2 footages released. Is is there a certain easter egg hidden within these sequences? Stay tuned to find out. Let's take a look at Jake and Nitiri's daughter, who showcased her swimming talents. In one of the scenes, several Met Kaina members can be seen swimming alongside Jake and Nitiri's Navi children. In contrast to the Sully siblings, who are unable to hold their breath for very long, the Met Kaina are seen swimming underwater for an extended amount of time with ease. The Met Kaina draw attention to their difficulty and claim that the kids are poor divers. The appearance of Kiri, Neytiri, and Jake's adoptive Navi daughter is possibly the scene's most important revelation. The heroine is then seen admiring the things she encounters while exploring the aquatic environment much more easily than her siblings. The character of Kiri, played by Sigourney Weaver, who also played Dr. Grace Augustine in the movie Avatar, is one of the movie's most intriguing elements. At D23 2022, footage from Avatar The Way of Water seems seems to imply that Kiri is the offspring of the Avatar 2 heroine played by Sigourney Weaver. Before saying, Hi Ma, the girl was apparently seen embracing a container that contained Grace's Navi avatar. Then we also see Lo Ak bond with a Tolkien. The second scene focuses on Lo Ak, a different child of Jake and Neytiri. The video depicts Lo Ak being saved by Payakan, a member of the Tolkien race of sea creatures, a whale-like creature. The creature speaks to Lo Ak and makes friends with him. According to reports, Payakan's point of view enters the scene and takes first person. The Tolkien's are clever creatures, maybe on par with the Navi and intelligence, according to the producer of the Avatar sequel, John Landau. Quote, the idea was to create a creature that was on the scale of Pandora. A Tolkien is like 300 feet long. They are a sentient species and as intelligent in their own way as the Navi's are in theirs. The Avatar sequel's anticipated subtitles were revealed online in 2018, the quest for Iwa, the Seed Bearer, the Way of Water, and the Tolkien Rider were among them. The names were under consideration for the movies, James Cameron would later admit. It's likely that one of the planned sequels will definitely use the Tolkien Rider subtitle, given that The Way of Water will serve as the title for the first Avatar sequel. As a result, the Tolkien race may continue to play a significant role in the series ongoing ahead. Additionally, as this sequence seems to hint, Neytiri and Jake's family's post-Avatar 2 history may be somehow related to the future of the animals. Then finally, we see Tonowari confronts Loak about his friendship with Payakin. Tonowari Wari, the Metkayina clan's chief, will be made known in Avatar The Way of Water. He interacts with Loak in the third after credit scene, and the sequence in the clip appears to occur after Loak and Payakin's initial encounter. It reveals that the young Navi formed a bond with the animal, much to Tonawari's chagrin. Because Tolkien's are not murderers, the leader reveals to Loak that Payakin committed a crime and was kicked out of his pack as a result. Tonawari, however, probably has the the wrong idea of Payakan because the way of water revolves around their relationship. Amid Loak and Tonowari's argument, Jake Sully shows up and promises to handle the problem with his son. Given Cameron's depiction of the monster, Payakan's slaying was probably justified. Loak and Payakan's frowned upon relationship appears to be a crucial emotional pillar in Avatar 2, which may have implications for the movie's overarching plot, as all three Avatar movies and credits scenes show. There is a lot to discover in the world of Pandora as the franchise develops. Avatar The Way of Water will significantly expand the mythology of the series. And with that, we're ending today's episode about James Cameron's Avatar The Way of the Water. Are you excited about the debut of this film? Tell us what you're looking forward to the most in the comments section. Thanks for watching today's video, and before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. See you next time!